What is the way to survive in Australia as an individual in the future? Now, this video is going to talk about um, the present time and the future. Now, I can't predict what the government or will do in Australia, but this is what the whole major theme I want you guys to understand. We never look ahead of our time. We always think about present time, especially my age, younger age, and maybe those who are a lot more matured mind or exp or understand um, what's going on with the age pension. The age pension right now, it's um, government is stripping so hard, it's creating a mean test, um, and just to finalize whether you're deserving or not to be acceptable or legible for this uh, age pension now all of us um as you know australia i think is 65 or 67 for age pension but i know by the end of um you now when, when it comes to my time to age pension i don't think there will be any age pension um, age bracket um or even if they do they might have probably pulled it down to 75 or something around there at the age so even if that's the case now um now more and more countries are lifting their age pension up, um, the the ages for retirement. So before the video begins, I'll let, have to discuss a bit about the history. I think a little bit of uh, politi political history to understand what's going on. Now Gus Whitlam, it was the 21st of, uh, Prime Minister of Australia. What I knew before I attend this week lecture. So this week lecture that I had, it was talking regards to his era and his changes, impact in the welfare system in Australia. Uh, what I know about it, he introduced multiculturalism by abolishing white policy, no fault divorce, de facto couples, LGBT was first time was. Um, to be recognized so therefore it's they are not considered as um, uh, a criminal or death penalty uh, they are part of the society so the LGBT was part of society so it's not um, nothing uh, they're not crime anymore not criminal as what it is once they introduce they recognize the group and as is uh, pretty much uh, under the family law act the children and women's right as well especially your family also under his uh, Whitlam, um, you know, abolish war con conscription, contraceptive pill, um, introduce uh, sewers in the western suburbs, um, in um, in Australia, uh, in New South Wales as well. Uh, Cabramatta, um, he was born in Kew, Melbourne, one of the rich suburbs in Melbourne in today's uh, world. I'm pretty sure back in the days during his era i think q is like a scum so yeah um whitlam has brought very different um you know he was he was in you know like pretty much in office for three years so he hasn't finished his term i only talk about that towards the end about his term he shaped Australia where we are today. Definitely it is 100%. Uh, without him, it won't be any migrants um, even stepping in the foot. Even if they, they have migrants back in the days, but it wasn't a large flow of them. So, found, you know, what I've learned um, in this week's uh, lecture, which I didn't know about, uh, uh, um, you know, Whitlam, is that he introduced Medicare. Uh, which back then it was called Medibank, free medical. Uh, he pulled all the trips back in Australia from Vietnam War. Triple J radio show, age pension overseas, homeless assistance, disability allowance, child orphan. Abolish means test for age pension. That is the topic that I'm heavily going to talk about, uh, which get back. Free education, um, so-called university. Racial Discrimination Act, uh, that's kind of more leaning towards with the women's right and the LGBT to be accepted um, without discriminating uh, work and everything. Indigenous right, land and the ownership of their lands, death penalty he abolished, voting age uh, was 21 and down to 18. 
and I mentioned before, end of this uh, conscription. Uh, he was the first Westerner to visit China and do trades as well. And he enabled, uh, like I said, individualism, women's right, and um, which creates a huge thing. And this is very important just to understand that history. And towards the end, he done so many things within three years, like, you know, all that in one big go, I'm pretty sure. Uh, <laughs> he has changed a lot and a lot. Um, it sounds like modern day Trump, um, but, uh, you know, they have different values, of course. But I'm trying to say, like, as a, as a, as a prime minister or president, change a lot of um, stuff in one big go. Um, yeah, um, towards this end of his term... Um, not term, but like towards the end, he was only president to be sacked by the queen because he established so much in one big go, and he's going to establish even more. Um, it wouldn't for Whitlam, I wouldn't be here in Australia to be honest. Um, I gotta Whitlam is like one of the most important historical figure in Australia. Yeah, you know, it's. It's, it's that's the topic that I'm talking about obtaining the government age pension uh, as you know the test looks into financial assets uh, whoever's been deserving and not so as I mentioned to you guys before um, the mean test is pretty much um, you have to go for assessment from the government to see what sort of assets or financial or bank account or and see whether you deserve or not to be part of the age pension but after Whitlam came in he abolished that and everyone who's at the retirement age uh, or accept, deserve to get an age pension in today's world um, perhaps last two years ago there was a huge changes in Australia for, um, and I heard in UK as well. Um, I know, but I only speak of Australia. That's what I know. Um, the government has introduced the mean test back again. So pretty much uh, many who failed the criteria of meeting the um, uh, the age pension, as you know, houses has increased dramatically over the years, and that just cut towards of assets and you know financial and obviously you need a certain amount of money in your bank account and that's what the asset that's for so I'm not sure what's my next slides but I'll push it okay age pension test so I'm not sure how things will go from here um, but what I do know is that a lot more people are, uh, pretty much you can't survive what I'm trying to tell you is um, if you don't get age pension in the future you can't survive um, and plus we're living in an individualism society where we encourage each of our members to to be individualism um, collectivism is kind of it still exists in Australia but we mainly focus on individualism um, as a forward thinker country where collectivism tend to be looked at as a backward but maybe I'm generalizing, but I'm, what I'm trying to give you telling you, the first world countries are more leaning towards individualism, freedom, rights, and everything. So, so the poor are most likely to get the age pension um, because they have a history of unemployment or welfare, and it, it sucks over for the working middle and rich class where. They work their entire life, they pay their taxes, and especially for working middle and obviously at rich, they are unable to get um, pension because, you know, they purchased their properties a while back, which cost them, you know, it, it was affordable, but now, God, nowadays it's like a mill, and, um, you know, there's a mean test under the Centrelink and the government right now to see who's deserving or not. And having a million dollars, uh, government would try to make it sound like you know you're you're not you're not entitled because of X Y Z because you could pretty much can sell the house and you know use that money and you know you don't need you only call us once you've 
you know, spent all your savings, assets and everything and you gotta prove to us that you have nothing left and that's when you go for the government. However, um, I don't know how many years it would take the person to spend all their money. Um, however, I spoke to my landlord, my landlord's been telling me, well, it's it says it on the guideline, but technically things has changed so much that it's kind of grey now. Um, it's kind of great the government um, thing they're doing. And why are we end up in this stage of main tests? Um, I only speak for now because I'm not sure how the future goes because of this. Now, there's less, you know, unemployment rate, it's actually really, really high. The government's trying their best to tackle the issue by government spending money for employees and job network, um, Get a incentive you know hiring people and government spend money um, government has spent so much money and plus there's not much locals is actually working in Australia I don't know what's the next I just gotta get, okay. I'll talk about this later but like there's not much people are working in Australia like mainly is like you know I can't blame the locals for not getting a job Getting a job, a work workplace is getting tougher and tougher. You know, you have to go through um, job interviews, stages of job interviews, and once you get into the work, there's a lot of like compliance. Uh, you know, a lot of work um, because labour is expensive in Australia. So pretty much all Western world. So pretty much they wish uh, you know divided the work evenly towards all the uh, workers and to work as much as they can, um, you know, for, for a little amount of uh, workers, because if there's less workers uh, for company, um, there's less wages for them to spend. So therefore, the workload is very intense and um, job security is not as what it is. So, Usually those who get that sort of jobs are usually um, are able to compete or able to work but it's tough because that sort of workflow it's very very tough to get to that stage and um, and organizations and companies they always can fire and hire because they can always find the best of the best. It's all about the KPIs, it's all about the workflow, it's all about targets, it's all about annual report. It's able to achieve a lot better than before and save as much, uh, you know, use efficient amount of money, um, which is pretty much similar to the. Um, I know it sounds rude for me to say this, but the new poor laws in 1834, um, you know, trying to make it. You know, actually, I can't say that, but work nowadays is a lot difficult, and uh, most people don't earn much, even though they work that sort of job. So mainly those who get into that sort of work field are nowadays, if you turn around in the corporate, it's usually those who are very, very high educated, university degrees, or perhaps migrants, skilled migrants as well. Um, but skilled migrants at the moment, they're winning the game. And yes, you, uh, a lot of uh, media says, you know, migrants, refugees, they create jobs. And yeah, they, they do work jobs, but I'll speak more to this. Like I mentioned before, um, you know, the boost economy more and more, good attribute money, but the money is flowing out. The migrants, like skilled migrants and as well migrants, you do pay them, um, whether you pay them um, a, a cheaper labour or, or perhaps the same wages and they work even harder. So employers will hire the best of the best. They don't care who you are, who you're with, they just want to hire the best of the best. But at the same time, when you hire skilled migrants or migrants overseas, um, I'm not saying all of them, but the money they'll trans, they'll you know they have to send money back to their country, their family, and everything. So pretty much, it's not a really good thing um, because when you give money like that, it's actually going out and it doesn't continuously flow within the country uh, in Australia. I mean, you know, if money keeps sending out and and the same with uh, government welfare, you know, government is uh, spending um, um, in a working middle, higher class taxes uh, to locals, to locals who got welfare, the welfare mainly will spend money within Australia. 
and it continues tax and flows and business you know if more money is in the business area and all buying or whatever the money keep going flowing flowing and taxes going but if money keep you know if they earn and they send back and earn and send back then the person spend less money or or close to nothing so that means the less people and less taxes so pretty much how it works so we're in this position because now less and less people are getting into the workforce as you guys know uh, we need globalization uh, most of the work uh, has been uh, gone to third world countries leaving technological and service industry but government struggling uh, on and on and on uh, a quarter of the country tax goes towards the welfare and it's keep increasing it doesn't decrease present to future um, I'll get my notes out so it's hard to predict the future and there's different government changing the policy as we live in a democrat society um, but you know with the current uh, rate of low tax generate within Australia it creates alarming um, as well uh, you know Australian government has privatized most of the services uh, mining is gone you know, doing trade deals or good trade deals with China. It's at the moment there's tension arise uh, with Australia and China, um, who were once were the best relationship trading partner. Now is becoming um, going down south as we're leading towards with America. Uh, it's sad. Um, a lot of good deals has gone now because coal and everything has gone to Brazil. Now Australia has leaving nothing. Uh, besides tourism, service, and hospitality, um, which doesn't generate much tax for the whole Australia, but it is a large industry. But it's creating government to print more money, um, and it suffers a lot. Um, you know, which means government has to hike up taxes within this area, and where businesses are kind of struggle. Um, I, I know a lot of businesses, private businesses nowadays are struggling and you guys know capitalism, big business doesn't pay much tax. It's a small business paying the taxes. Um, so it's a struggle now. Um, if small business are gone, I don't know how Australia will ever going to succeed uh, down the road. Um, I think the government goal has to realise uh, wanting to demolish our social welfare. Um, as China is a good example. Um, they don't have much social welfare, but the only welfare they have, the largest area is age pension. Um, where you see Western nations are keep printing money and going down south. And I know China's not, you know, they spend money in, you know, in different areas, but comparison talking, at least there's uh, something that's actually going on in China. So, you know, in a way. So this is the GDP, uh, 2001, each of the countries spending their social welfare. Um, so you can tell the uh, Scandinavians is pretty high. Oh, let's check out what's the Scandinavian one, Sweden. You know, Sweden's really high. Luxembourg, Norway, like, you know, these are the country and there's another one. Ugh, gosh, these countries are spending really, really high. Australia is not among the highest, but if you see like the OECD countries, you see some Korea is one of the least amount. And, um, you know, with the Syrian migrant crisis, it's been flowing really high with the United States. Oh, no, you, no not, sorry, I can't say United States, I have to rub it out. Um, definitely is in the um, UK with the Syria. Oh, gosh. And Germany, with France? France. These are the three top countries that most people will go uh, because they provide the most of the most. And now, um, new, new my uh, immigrants or wanted to get the PR or a green card or a citizenship have this opportunity to get this. So they start to realize um, there's a lot, large boost. I'm not saying all of them are like that. I'm just saying it increase. This will be newly up. There will be have there have to be a new update because it's based on two thousand one. Um, so two thousand 
So we are, Australia is doing pretty well as uh, OECD country. Now, currently what's happening? Um, what this feminist and as well, most men will go through MGTOW or red pill. Oh, it's not to trust women. Um, but, you know, for them to go realize, um, you know, whether um, the dating selection or, you know, we tend to live longer now, uh, more opportunity, we live in a hypersexual reality society. Where you turn on your TV, you turn on the news, you, you, the people, the way how they dress is different. It's all hypersexual, uh, cheating, and um, there's no big punishment. Or you get stoned, you get killed, or you get shamed or stigmatized if you get stoned or killed if you get divorced or breaking up or cheating. Um, nowadays, you just go through the court system and everything like that. Um, and um, yeah, it's just both gener so will started to realize in a long term they'll need each other to survive. And um, I'm not saying just the pop kids or anything like that, but you, you know, I'm talking about like um, combine the savings. Um, I'm not talking about. I know, I know this topic is very sensitive, but I'm not talking about like uh, you know chances of divorce or cheated on or spend money. Uh, not in a proper way. I'm I'm talking about both gender will, will need to stay each other just to prolong the surviving rate. Okay, um, I make that clear. And the reason behind is because the cost of living is keep going up, and um, you know, if you combine two savings, two super. It prolongs the surviving rate and I, I, I believe it in the future people will, will for the sake of getting to each other just based on surviving not based on divorcing because if you can divorce right you can have 400,000 or I'm exaggerating the amount but how long does 400,000 can prolong your surviving rate you know it can be depending on the lifestyle on that person 10, 20 years, it's less than 20 years if you have 400,000, probably 15 years. If you don't work, you don't do nothing and you retire 400. It doesn't get you anywhere. But if you have another partner, if you didn't divorce and you combine the savings or um, you combine everything, you prolong, it'd be 30 or 40. Uh, when you live with a couple, you, you save more money because um, you know, housing is cheap when you're buying groceries cheaper rent you know you look each other um, you do things it's a lot more cheaper than an individual person uh, this responsibility and um, yeah as I mentioned before what we're going through right now is dysfunctional with red pill um, the working is not as very strong it's not working nation anymore it's not functionless under the climb theory so therefore it's not that great and I, I remember you know I mentioned before like uh, uh, retirement savings uh, nowadays more and more uh, you know financial planners or banks or governments talk about save super 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 because you have your savings but look really deep on the super which means they're telling you now is like you better work so hard to earn more super of savings and if it's 400,000 in your bank account, I don't know, I'm just exaggerating, you know, it can prolong um, the savings in, down the track. But at the same time, savings is a, it's great, you know. Um, and as well, um, let's go to the final point. It costs 500,000 to stay in a decent retirement village. Uh, this is coming from my mother. My mother has been working at H, H care and she's been telling me, um, to live in a decent 500,000 now this 500,000 uh, it's till you die in a retirement uh, village so but it's not including medical so even if you have another option is to stay in a retirement village 500,000 but then again this is percent time at the moment I'm not talking about what would be like in the future You know, what, what the government's trying to do now with the main testing and um, they wanted to bring the collectivism 
and it's the way to they realize the collectivism they cannot sustain this individualism because it's it's going down south and it's costing the government to spend more money uh, where the individual problems is turning into private a, a, a government's problem where collectivism is more of looking at each other uh, where the individual person problem is the whole family or tribe uh, problem for them to solve and um, it's easy for them to deal government should take less uh, responsibility for uh, uh, from uh, individual issues because um, in the future it will definitely happen um, collectivism is the way to prolong the surviving way in the future as warfare so if you have this um, one of the big thing about uh, many people who doesn't want to pop kids or whether they meet or whether they're feminist or whether they're doing things like that is that what is the a uh, huge huge benefit because child when they grow up they whether they support you or they be individualism um, it's creating a negative effect um, that's why um, nowadays people when they see marriage or, or or having a kid it's it's a burden it's a loss I'm sorry to say this but what is the difference between me to live and die alone in comparison with a family um, you know me and my missus and my kid where by the time the kid is turned 18 you have no savings um, you know you spend all your savings or you know to your kids education upbringing and everything and I understand why um, the equality payment uh, equal pay and as well with um, a lot of guys as one again to um, marry a MGTOW movement and a sort of red pill is on the rise but to be honest with you guys it's not a really good thing in the future because it's going to create a huge damage effect upon us as what we're seeing right now because of living going up just based on that okay we need a stronger work nation more more tax less social problems so if you as I mentioned before right if we don't have this feminist or red pill or meat tail and people tend to marry to each other um, without thinking of divorce or cheating or things like that it creates a stronger work nation because um, if you're in a family uh, if you and your missus uh, work you're more than willing to work overtime extra shift or work second job or third job or generate another income sources it not only just benefit your back pocket but it benefits the society tax as well um, the world started to wake up on Trump movements um, bringing um, realism instead of government what, what's right now trying to fake the job employment I I'll go briefly um, I'll put the links below on that video basically um, government is paying employees to hire unemployment um, up to six to twelve months uh, they receive they, the government will give them incentive for employers and as well with job agencies but they will never renew their contract and fire and hire them so pretty much it's like continuity of hiring people just to boost the employment rate um, but if you have a strong family and don't think about the hypersexual and everything uh, it brings a lot more stable uh, a lot more tax and more people tend as a there's a reason for them to wake up and work I know it sounds um, to um, especially my course and uh, to the feminists is saying that well we don't need a guy um, you know single mums tend to not like they do work as hard but it's a lot better if both gender who works even harder it benefits society um, I know this topic is very very sensitive but it, it is the truth it's not just it benefits the state a lot more um, but I don't think it's going to be happening any soon but you never know we might have this uh, Trump movement or perhaps something like that will ever happen um, in our life that brings real stuff instead of printing co a continuity of printing money and giving out money I think it will be something that will be sorted in the future but you never know technology 3d printer um, automation will take all over a lot of jobs so I'm not sure how the future goes so I'm only based on what's right now um, so I give you a different side of my opinion 
Many locals, uh, you know, uh, giving up cost of living, high property prices, struggle to start a family or marriage. And uh, the poverty rate at the moment is 13%. Um, so homeless is on the rise, mental health and things like that. Uh, many has given up because of this continued rat race. Affect everyone. It does. It does really affect everyone. If you're low socioeconomic, uh, low education background, um, you cannot compete with today's uh, rat race world. Even if you do, uh, how many of them um, who who get there? Even if they do get there, but I, I'm just saying, the more chances you are to compete on the rat race is to stay in that sort of area. To survive till the end of age pension, um, as I mentioned before, collectivism, a big family structure, tribal family, dual savings as well as I mentioned before. Uh, relationship is the surviving tool in the future. Um, it is the future. Gain knowledge to find ways to generate extra income resources instead of relying on one um, invest business and shares so technically if you're on a business or technical or if your family you tend to have this sort of stuff or perhaps move to Thailand and retire there if you have the right amount of savings because I'm not sure what's the ratio of the conversion a dollar Australia to I think it's like 28 baht so 1 to 28 but you never know um, down in the future things will change here's my last slide the answer like us um, it is the main video that I wanted to target is yeah, my age and as well a generation below me um, because we never think about this sort of stuff what's ahead midlife many of us who whether moved out try new things exploring go travel holiday live with the parents uh, but we never think of head and obviously it does it creates some um, It stuns the work um, and as well it stuns the work continuity working hard you just leave what's enough for you to put on your plate and spend it all um, a lot of Asians they think about Westerners are like that they spend all what they earn in a week don't give up or else it, it's a burden to the society of labor yes laziness and it is a lot of people give up um, it's a very struggle to live in today's world. I, you know, it's not only just Australia, but many people um, work and fight for it. Strong, maintain a strong work market and help the government generate more tax. So that in the future, government won't cut age pension, uh, make right choices, things like that. Um, have to compete with the rat race to generate tax and businesses so that is the only way that I know and what I mentioned to you guys early on so that is the video of the day I'm gonna make another video uh, which is completely different about this topic but I feel like this topic is very very important why pension not only just pension but down the track there'll, there'll be a lot of cutting um, government cutting spending in, in different areas it's hard to question why are they doing this and you know less tax less work people less money this is what he creates